I ran the London Marathon with five of the cheapest watches, and today we're gonna dive deep into the data to see if these cheap watches are actually worth using, and if maybe you don't need to spend $800 on the newest, latest, greatest Apple Watch Ultra or Garmin. Apple Watch Ultra 2 will be the lead watch. Connected to the chest heart rate strap, and we've got the Flow Bio S1 heart rate sensor. So let's have fun, baby, let's go. So I tried to wear six, but one of them did not turn on. Sadly, the Amaze Fit did not work. I wore the Sunto on my forearm, the Garmin Forerunner 55 on my left wrist, the Coros Pace 3 on my left hand attached to the bicep heart rate monitor, the Apple Watch SE 2 40 millimeter on my right wrist, and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 on my right forearm. We'll look at the battery percentages, the distance pacing data compared to my actual chip and bib time. We'll look at the GPS map to see how it compares throughout the entire race. And then finally, my final thoughts, and maybe is it worth just spending $200 on a cheap watch and getting accurate enough data? We're gonna find out. And we did have some issues before I started the race. The SE 2 wasn't powering on because I turned all these watches off and I turned them on right before the race. I was having issues loading the workout app on the SE2 for some reason, so I ended up starting the race before the start line and then pausing it on the SE2 because there is no precision start on it. So there is some extra data at the beginning. The Amazfit didn't even power on and I wasn't even able to use it during the race, so I'm kind of disappointed in that. The Sunto is a very big watch. It was on top of my forearm, but it was a bit wobbly, so I'm not going to say the heart rate data is the best heart rate data. And the Coros was attached to their heart rate monitor on the bicep, and I think some of the data over time got a little bit fudgy, and I don't know if it was because I was sweating and moving around and that could have loosened up or something like that. And the Apple Watch Ultra 2 was connected to a heart rate strap, so that was kind of my gold standard. We have the potentially the best heart rate data from the Garmin heart rate strap, and then potentially the best GPS data from a multi-band Apple Watch Ultra 2. Now the first section is battery percentages. How much battery did I lose on each device? The Apple Watch Ultra 2 dropped from 100 to 49%. I was wearing it throughout the day after the race, so it's probably closer to 60%, 70%. The Apple Watch SE 2 was the only watch that died I got to about 24 miles and then it went dead. And so that's 0%. The Garmin 455 was 85%. The Coros Pace 3, 77%. And the Sunto Race was 87%, which lasted the most. And the Amazfit sadly never turned on. Next, we're gonna dive deep into the summary of the data. And we have this new Fit File Analyzer, which I worked on with Jason. He pretty much built the entire thing. And we're gonna go through a summary of all the data, dive deeper into the charts and graphs. And there's some interesting things that we found. Jason, are you excited? I'm very excited. Uh, it was super fun to look in, at this data and see some of the variation between the different devices. Let's get into the summary. So here is the summary data. You can see all the sports we're running. We have the Apple Watch Ultra 2 on the left, the SE2, the Forerunner 55, Cross Pace 3, and the Sunto Race S, all the columns and colors on the top. The total time and duration, and the Apple Watch SE died, so it has a shorter duration. The total distances, so I ran 26.2 miles on the marathon, and the, actually the closest watch to that was the Cross Pace 3, but it doesn't mean that that was the best watch in terms of GPS accuracy, because Jason, why is that important? How do you look at the distance in a race and how is it measured and how should my watch compare to an actual race? Yeah, so when they're measuring a race course, for it to be an official race course, they're measuring the tightest possible turn. And when you're running, you're obviously not hitting all of those. And then there's also the GPS is bouncing around between buildings as you're running through. So it's the combination of those two things that's gonna lead to your distance being a bit higher than that 26.2. Yep, and Apple Watch offers some smoothing. So that's why the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is 26.41 and we'll see the GPS data graphs as well. My official pace was 521 minutes per kilometer, which converts to a 836. So if you look at the average pace, the closest was actually the Garmin 455. But you can't take this into account because the distances were all different, as well as the total duration. Some of these watches I started earlier. But it's interesting to see that most of them are close enough. 818 was the SE because it died earlier. And, the, and I died in the last few miles. So that's why I had the lowest average pace. But everyone seemed to be within five to 10 seconds of minute per mile. Next was heart rate, average heart rate 155, 157, all very close. So it seems like from a high level average heart rate view, they're good. But when you look at the charts, you'll see a massive difference. Max heart rate 172, 174, the Sunto race seemed to be different. And this is where we'll start to see some of the heart rate data might have been off because this watch was wobbling around a lot. And then my Strava with my Apple Watch Ultra 2 showed 729. But if we come back here, my Apple Watch Ultra 2 on here shows 315, and then all these other devices, 299, 390, 1500, 3800 on the Forerunner. Not sure what happened here, but if we're gonna go off this one, 266, it seems like the Apple Watch SE2 was the closest, but it died early, so we can't use that data. I'm gonna go with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Jason, why do you think the elevation was so sporadic on all these watches, and it's so different on 
two different websites that are both Strava. Yeah, this was super interesting to me. When you look at the same device data on different platforms, different analysis platforms, you're getting different metrics, right? the elevation was almost twice as high on your Strava as it was on the platform that we built. And that can be for a few different things. It's how we consider what data points are outliers, which ones to exclude. It's the smoothing that we talked about before that we'll get into a little bit more in the charts. And in terms of calories, 3,400, 32, 37, those are all pretty close. Now let's jump into the split. So this is where we're gonna compare the actual bib times. And we only had every 5K, but we can see how it compared to each of the watches. You see the race data on the far left side. My official time was a 3.45.11. If you don't believe me, here it is again. And then all the 5K times are also published online. So for example, if you wanna compare half marathon, 142.55 was my official, but everyone else was a bit under. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 was probably the closest. The SE was overestimating at 144. So it seems like it was putting on more distance while I was actually running versus the other watches and then the Garmin, Koros, and Sunto are 141. Why do you think that is? And that comes back again to you're not going to be running the exact shortest route that they measured. The GPS is bouncing around a few different things. So not super surprising that you'd hit that 13.1 miles a little bit sooner than the actual official race course would have you believe. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Even at the 5K point, 25 minutes, 27, 25, 25. It looks like the SE2 seemed to be the most off, whereas the Ultra 2 and then every other running focused watch was relatively close for you know at least the 5th 10 15k even and they started to be different at the halfway mark and then you also mentioned that the apple se2 you had trouble starting it at the beginning i believe so i think that's where we're getting those extra two minutes mm, or so at the beginning on that splits. makes sense so if we look here this is the heart rate graph i can actually drag over and see the heart rate over time like i said the sunto was on my left forearm and it was moving a lot so we're going to discount that heart rate data the Chorus Pace 3 was attached to a bicep heart rate band, and the Ultra 2 was my chest heart rate strap from Garmin, so that's gonna be the quote unquote gold standard. What were some of the biggest things you noticed from the heart rate data here? Yeah, I definitely saw a bunch of variability. We were talking about how that might be related to where you were actually wearing the watch, right? If you weren't wearing it in that optimal spot. When we change over the smoothing on these charts, that's where you really start to see some of those outliers. So I believe it was the Sunto that you said you were wearing a bit further up on your arm, and we can see that there was a lot more variation in the heart rate. Yeah, it looks like the SC2 did a great job, one of the cheapest ones, the 455, but the Sunto did, at the beginning especially, it was far off from the gang, the group, and then it was the Pace 3 with the bicep band that halfway through, you know, the last section, it started to jump away from everyone else, so that's very interesting. I'm not sure what that happened, maybe it moved. The 455 also started to teeter away a little bit, but the SE2 and the Ultra 2 were spot on together the entire way, and the Ultra 2 was connected to the chest heart rate strap. Next is the overall elevation data. Let's dive deep into that. What are the biggest things you noticed? So we have some bouncing around here, right? When we're looking at this graph, that's that light blue, is that the Garmin? And I think we saw that that was, had a few thousand more feet of elevation gain when we were looking at the summary. So something was definitely up with that watch. Overall though, the trend of the watches do, does look pretty similar to the race course. I don't know if you remember that first big downhill that we can see there. That definitely stood out to me when I was looking at the data. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, we got the massive downhill and then it should be relatively flat if, if we look at the other Strava race course routes. But for some reason, the Garmin 4Runner 55 had a whole bunch of spikes throughout the race. Whereas the Apple Watch SE2 also had some extra spikes that were not necessary. But the Sunto, the Ultra 2, and the Chorus Pace 3 seem to be close to each other. The Sunto and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 seem to have the best elevation data but they were also the two most expensive watches. And then lastly, pace. When I did run this marathon, I did the last four or five miles I started to walk. I struggled a bit. So we're gonna see that in this information and data. Cut me some slack. I ran the slowest marathon ever. Next time I'll do better. But it's interesting to see how the pace changed because I was walking a lot. And this is the raw pace chart graph. As you can see, the pace three for some reason had a massive drop off in the beginning. And they're all relatively close, but the Garmin 455 had some spikes out of the pace three. But it seems like the Sunto Race and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 seemed to be pretty well tied together. It was all the cheaper watches that had some moments where they 
left the gang like here the 455 jumped down to like what some spikes to the bottom what else did you notice jason so if we expand the smoothing here what that does is that removes some of the outlier data points and let us see some of the trends in the data so we got so, five minutes of smoothing what does five minutes versus 10 seconds of smoothing mean? so what that's basically doing is smoothing is basically saying take the average data points over a set period of time so that's going to create smoother lines but eliminate some of that variation that we might see so earlier we are seeing some some variation at the beginning and that's eliminated when we turn on the smoothing and that's where we can see the 455 struggled the most it seems like in the end and the cross pace 3 maybe as well Whereas the SC2, the Sunto, and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 are relatively close for the most part, right? And pace is also just going to kind of be a proxy, for lack of a better term, for the combination of everything else, that GPS. So some of the bouncing around that we are seeing mm -hmm. in some of the other data is also going to show up in the pace data. And lastly, we're going to dive into the map. So we're going to look at the actual race map. And you can see there are Strava maps as well, but we have all the watches laid out on a GPS map. You can see the different colors on the bottom. And I want to see how different they are around the entire race course. So we'll quickly go through and note, point out anything that we thought stood out and was like very interesting. For the most part, if you look at the beginning of the race, they were all together. Like there's not a lot of tall buildings in London in this part. So they were not jumping around much. So it seems like any cheap watch would work amazing in areas that don't have a lot of tall buildings. I think it's when we start to enter the city center in central London where things start to separate a little bit and well, we'll dive into that this is canary wharf i think that's where we notice the biggest changes right definitely so as we go through the map look they're all stuck on each other head on and then canary wharf this is where things started to jump around the apple watches do have some smoothing they will use apple maps data and supposedly the find my network to do some fancy stuff behind the scenes but we can see black is apple watch ultra 2 it's stuck to the road pretty well the pink se2 it jumped it has no multi-band GPS, so it's not going to be perfect. It did jump off a bit. The Garmin 455 also does not, so that did jump as well. But it looks like the Coro Space 3 and the Sunto were doing well. And then the Coro Space is like, hey guys, I also want to jump around. And this part, this is the part where everything, everyone went crazy. The Apple Watch Ultra 2, the black, look at that smooth right on the road. Like, I don't think it could be any more accurate than that. Whereas everyone else jumped around a lot. The 455 didn't know what it was doing. The Apple Watch SE2 has some smoothing as well. You can see the smoothing, but it missed the road. There is smoothing, it missed the road. The Pace 3, it's jumping around a bit. The 455 had the most like kind of jaggedy lines. It seems like it kind of missed that road. We're jumping around here. They all got back together as the buildings went away. Overall, it's looking pretty strong here. Oh, this is the part where the Apple Watch Ultra 2 separated from everyone else. I'm guessing I ran around this half circle, but even the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is not like on the actual road. So I don't know what fully happened here. This is one point where the Ultra 2 left the entire group. Everything looks good here. Pretty strong, pretty strong. Now we're getting close to the finish and the buildings are getting taller. There's more people. And this is where I started to walk because I died. And you can see the 455 left the gang a bit. The SE2 is smooth, but it's like off the road. And it's not with the gang. The Pace 3 had a little bump here. So they're doing decently well. It's not perfect, but it seems like it's good enough. Like if you don't need exact distance and pacing data, like it's like, oh, it's 85% accurate. Honestly, this is like 90% accurate. What thoughts do you have? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty high quality. And then another thing to, to consider is that when you're uploading it to Strava or to a platform like we've made or any other platform, it is going to do, remove some of those outliers include some of that smoothing so that means even if a watch is a little bit lower quality in terms of the data it's gathering it still might show up pretty accurately and pretty high quality when you're analyzing that data yeah why, why is that that different tools and systems might have different data even though it might be the same raw data like the apple watch on strava had a 700 foot elevation and then some of the distance pacing was slightly different than the what shows in my Apple Fitness app versus what we see on the Fit File viewer here. Yeah, so these watches are all using a standardized format called a Fit File, which is basically tons and tons of little points. It's gathering GPS data, it's gathering your heart rate, it's gathering tons and tons of little data points. This Fit File was actually created by Garmin initially, and now it's kind of a standard throughout the industry. And when you upload that Fit File, to a platform like Strava, like the platform that we've made, every platform is going to look at the data a little bit differently. It's gonna have different thresholds for what data point is an outlier or seems inaccurate, so we're not going to include that when we're looking at the data overall. Yeah. And the smoothing, obviously, we keep coming back to that one. So yeah, we, we're actually gonna to try to deploy this as an app that everyone can use, so if you're interested, I will have a link down for my newsletter. Sign up for that down below, and once it's ready, where you can upload your own fit file data, you can compare it and see how it works. At one point, maybe, we'll have you submit your data where I can use it 
in future videos. So if you want to see that, also let me know in the comments below if there's anything. If there's anything on this app that you also want to see, let us know because we want to improve it and make it as, maz as amazing as possible. One thing I was thinking is what if we had 100 people who ran the same race and all submitted their data files and we had hundreds of data points of files from the same course and we were able to analyze at scale, right? Because here we only have one file per device. But what if we had 10 files from 10 different people from the same device? We could really get in there and, and learn even more. So if you do want to see that, follow me on all the socials, especially Instagram at Sherman Share. Subscribe turn on notifications and comment below if you're interested in that because if we have enough people we will make it happen we're gonna go deeper into this app and if you want to see that i'll have a video linked down below in terms of how the app was built kind of what it does what it's able to do that'll be on the second channel but in terms of like the best cheap watch what would you would you which watch would you run with that's out of all these like seeing the data now like what would you pick as your favorite cheap watch not the apple watch ultra 2 because so the apple watch ultra 2 was the most expensive I think for me, looking at the data, I would run with any of these watches because they're all in the two to three hundred dollar, maybe four hundred dollar range, and they're all like pretty good. The Apple Watch SE2 probably enough for a half marathon, even a slow half marathon, but it, as long as you charge it that day. But honestly, the Gar Garmin 455 at its price range of 199 is the cheapest in this, and it's like it's good enough. Like I'm not gonna get the best data, but it looks like the heart rate's decent enough, the distance pacing is decent enough, where it's like if I'm training for something, just getting started, I don't want to spend too much money. It's good enough. Training is the most important thing. These watches are tools, the next best thing. So if I were to pick one, I'd probably say Apple Watch SE2 for half marathon and below. Anything more than that, the Garmin 455, save your money. And I say that all the time when I'm coaching friends, right, to run their first marathon. Like data is important, numbers important, but at the end of the day, you're, you're going off of feel. You wanna enjoy the race day, have a good experience. You put in all the training. So don't pay too much attention to the data. Yeah, exactly. Subscribe, join notifications, sign up for the newsletter down below to see future stuff and watch the deep dive video. We'll see you in the next one, peace.